We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, the show that brings you man-on-the-street interviews, celebrity guests, groundbreaking research, and heartwarming stories about the reasons we smile. Our show is also known as everything you've always wanted to know about dentistry, but we're too numb to ask. Hello, I'm General Dentist Dr. Kavitko, and thank you for joining me today. The following views and opinions do not necessarily reflect those of this station, its staff, management, or parent company. To hear a replay of this show or one of the great shows that previously aired, log on to TheReasonsWeSmile.com or iTunes, keyword Dr. Kavitko or The Reasons We Smile. Listeners should not use Dr. Kavitko's comments and advice in place of an actual dental exam. Brighten your life with a smile that shows the professional touch of Dr. Kavitko. Time now for The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Call 459-9769 to discuss your dental issues. Now, here's your host, Dr. Kavitko. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Reasons We Smile. I'm Dr. Kavitko. Thank you so much for joining me. It is episode number 527. I think it's going to be a great show. It's going to be a great day. Thank you so much for tuning in. For those of you that have never listened, we always I want you to know that we always give away free flowers with each show. They'll be uh, from DeSantis Florist, and we'll do the contest in about 10 minutes. So you're going to have a chance to win those by calling in and giving us the answer. Let me just give you that phone number so you can pre-program it into your phone. It's 614-459-9769. That's 614-459-9769. Okay, coming up in about 10 minutes. Today the show is entitled, Things About Children's Dental Health and Children's Dental Health Month That You May Not Know. Before we get started, that remind you, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, it's at Dr. Kavitko. And if you would please go to my office Facebook page and like us, that would be awesome. You can also, uh, we are, uh, we are uh, streaming live on Facebook right now. All past episodes complete with video are available at thereasonswesmile.com. Okay, and also, if you are a dentist with at least three years' experience, I'm looking for an associate, so please call me or send me an email. All right, the office number is 614-262-9588. That's 614-262-9588. Or you can send me an email to bkavitko at aol.com. That'll keep it private, all right? Okay, so as I mentioned, uh, we are going to talk about Children's Dental Health Month, which happens to be February of each year, and also... A little bit about children's dental health. So one of the things I've, I wanted to mention is uh, National Children's Dental Health Observances began with a one-day event in Cleveland, Ohio, and a one-week event in Akron, Ohio, during February of 1941. Did you know that? It was Ohio. It was Cleveland and Akron that started National Gen Dental Health Month. I think that's pretty cool. Um, yay, Ohio, right? Uh, since then, the concept has grown from a two-city event into a nationwide program. The American Dental Association held the first national observance of Children's Dental Health Day on February 8, 1949, which was eight years after Akron and Cleveland did theirs. The single-day observance became a week-long event in 1955, and in 1981, the program was extended to a month-long celebration known today as National Children's Dental Health Month. The National Children's Dental Health Month messages reach millions of people in communities across the country and at numerous, numerous armed service bases. Local observances often include posters, coloring and essay contests, health fairs, free dental screenings, museum exhibits, classroom presentations, and dental office tours. Uh, attitudes and habits established at an early age are critical in maintaining good oral health throughout life. I think we can all agree on that. By participating in the annual celebration of National Children's Dental Health Month, um, members of the dental team, parents, teachers, and others can help keep children's smiles beautiful now and for years to come. So. That's, uh, I think that's an interesting history there, and by the way, some of that's going to be important when we do Dr. Kavitko's question of the day, primarily that it started in Akron and Cleveland. Okay, so what Children's Dental Health Month does is it identify, well, the first thing uh, local uh, chapters who are participating do is try to identify the community oral health needs. So is, the, is this particular community's concerns access to care? Or is there a lot of early childhood caries, which is, which is cavities? Um, do they need education in sealants or, or tooth decay or maybe tobacco use? Keep in mind we're not just talking about the little bitties. We're talking about teenagers too. Uh, sports injuries, of course, that would be teenagers as well. Junk food, are kids in your community eating too much junk food? Uh, what's in your school vending machine? Uh, is there met methamphetamine use in your community? And so... You know, once we can determine what is going on in a particular community, 
the dental uh, offices, the, uh, the chapters of the dental societies can try to put programs together that will address those needs. So I think it's a good program and it's, um, it is important that um, children, especially children, start off with uh, great uh, dental habits. They, learn, they need to learn from their parents and um, because everybody I've met who is afraid of the dentist will tell me about a childhood story. Something that went bad when they were younger that makes it so that they are afraid now. And oftentimes they won't even tell people. They won't even vocalize it. Y your spouse might even, know, not e might even know that you're afraid or certainly not your kids or your boss or anything like that. But I find out when you come and you start asking questions like, so is this going to hurt or how big's the needle or I don't know if I want to do this today. Can I drive when I'm done? You know, do <laughs> all of that. And keep in mind that uh, I do sedation, different options, uh, laughing gas, oral sedation, as well as uh, um, IV sedation, so we can handle that. But of course, we have to know the person is, uh, is very nervous first. It's hard to do it on the fly, because we need people to have not had anything by mouth from midnight the night before, and to have a ride home. Now, there, is, there are some t statistics that I want to let you guys know about, and that is tooth decay is the most common childhood disease. Okay, remember that. The most common childhood disease is tooth decay. In fact, it's five times more common than asthma. Three out of every five children are affected by tooth decay. Three out of every five. So if you, if you have five kids, three of them are going to get tooth decay at least. All right? 51 million school hours are missed due to oral disease. 51 million school hours. That's amazing. Due to uh, dental disease or oral disease. So, you know, with Children's Dental Health Month and just being aware of um, oral health in general and how important it is, and that's, I believe, what this show brings to the table is helping people understand the importance of that. Uh, we can prevent uh, a lot of this disease. We can minimize the number of school hours that are missed. We can hopefully make it less common than asthma, you know, because uh, ours is preventable. Asthma, I don't think it is. Asthma, I think you're born with it, right? So, anyway... Okay, so now let's get on to some other um, cool things, cool facts. And, um, okay, so uh, here's what parents need to know or what to look out for to make sure your children have great dental health. Teaching them about taking care of their teeth can be challenging, but it's important to ensure a good foundation for building lifelong habits of oral hygiene and health for them as they grow up. There is this common misconception about infants and toddlers' teeth being less important than adult teeth since they aren't permanent. But this idea can lead to harmful conditions in a child's mouth, including early childhood caries. They are important. They're very important. They, they're there to serve a purpose. They hold space for the adult teeth. And they allow the child to chew in the meantime until they get their adult teeth. So without baby teeth, they can't really chew very well, can they? And if they lose a baby tooth through just natural rot or having to have it extracted by a dentist because it was uh, terribly decayed, well now, the other teeth shift and there's no room for the adult teeth and you just set them up for a life of, um, of orthodontics that they wouldn't have needed and all kinds of um, bad things, okay? Early childhood caries, and by the way, that's what we call cavities. I'm not sure why we have a different name for it than what people call it, but if you hear me say the word caries, I'm not talking about my wife's possessions, which her name is Carrie, I'm talking about dental decay. <laughs> so, early childhood caries is when one or more baby teeth in a child who is from age zero to six has decayed missing, and usually they're missing due to decay, or has had a filling in their mouth. Bacteria that live in our mouths causes tooth decay. The main source of food for bacteria is sugar. When bacteria eat sugar, they produce an acid that can break down the surface of the teeth. So here are some tips to prevent early childhood caries in your child and give them a head start in oral hygiene. Take them, take your child um, for early and regular dental exams. A baby's first dental appointment should be scheduled within six months of their first tooth, but no later than their first birthday. All right? Now, those of you that have a one-year-old are going to go, there's no way my child's going to sit still for a dental appointment, right? And you know what? We're just trying to get them acquainted. We might get a chance to look in their mouth. We want to get them used to this idea that coming to the dentist is an okay thing because they've already been to the physician for, uh, for their shots, right? And, and the vaccines, so... Um, Start, got to start bringing them to the dentist so they see it's a slightly different setup, right? Different chair. Uh, we have a, a bracket table. We have all these tubings and things that you don't see at a, at a medical office. 
Okay, number two, minimize saliva sharing activities between parents, caregivers, and the baby or the children to limit bacteria transmission. We all want to hug and kiss our kids and our babies, but be careful not to make sure that, that be, be careful to make sure that it's not saliva that's being exchanged, okay? Kiss them on the cheek, kiss them on the head, just don't kiss them uh, on the mouth, okay? Even if you're their mom, because they don't have antibodies to your, um, the diseases that you're carrying yet. Even though they're your child, they haven't, their immune system is too immature, they can get, they can get sick. Don't put your children to bed with a bottle of milk, formula, or juice, okay? The sugars in these drinks can sit on your child's teeth all night and cause tooth decay. Limit snacks, snacking on simple carbohydrates such as cereal, crackers, cookies, white bread, and Gatorade. These have sugars that feed the cavity causing bacteria in the mouth. Brush or rinse your child's teeth after administering sugary uh, medications. So even if it's a medicine, if it's, if it's sweetened with sugar, Make sure that you uh, rinse your child's mouth with water or brush their teeth. Brush your child's teeth twice a day with fluoridated toothpaste. Make sure it's fluoridated, and this is important because it prevents bacteria from continuing to grow, which may eventually lead to other dental diseases. Keeping your children's teeth clean is important, but dental health also includes checking for injuries, and that's where we get on to the older children, the ones that I said, you know, you wouldn't think about injuries in a one-year-old or a two-year-old or a three-year-old, but what I'm seeing here is that it's probably time for us to do uh, Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. So when we come back from all of that, we're going to pick up where we left off, and this time we'll be talking about um, injuries and maybe uh, children that are a little bit older. But as I mentioned, we are going to do Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. Let me double check and make sure I've given you all of the information that I think is important for you to know. Yeah, I think I've given it all to you. So. Before we do the contest, we'd like you to listen to this. This station will not be held liable for any contesting during The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Participation in the contest allows Dr. Kavitko to record and broadcast your name and call. One winner per household, prizes are non-transferable, cannot be substituted, and are subject to taxes and fees. This station cannot be responsible for the inability to enter the contest, whether due to equipment malfunction or telephone difficulties. All decisions of Dr. Kavitko concerning this contest or eligibility are final. And now it's time for Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. All right, and today's question of the day is about today's topic, which is the fact that February is National Children's Dental Health Month. And earlier in the show, we gave out some facts, some things that you need to consider about your children. And so, um, what were they? Did I mention A, that National Children's Dental Health Month began in 1941? Did I mention B, that National Children's Dental Health Month began with a one-day event in Cleveland and a week-long event in Akron? Did I mention C, that tooth decay is the most common childhood disease? Or did I mention all of the above? Okay, the winner's going to receive free flowers from DeSantis Florist. They'll be delivered to your place of business this Tuesday afternoon. The number to call is 614-459-9769. That's 614-459-9769. So go ahead and call now. You won't believe it though. I wanna hear your mind. And there's nothing else in the world tonight. She said people don't take the time. Hey, people don't take the time. Hi, I'm Keith Carlos, winner of America's Next Top Model and star of Chocolate City 2. Look for my smile on the big screen this summer, courtesy of Dr. Kavitko. Stay tuned to the reasons we smile with Dr. Kavitko, the world's most interesting dentist. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko, general dentist and host of the Reasons We Smile radio and road show. Did you know that you no longer need to visit several different dental professionals to get more complete dental care? We handle everything from cleanings and orthodontics to restoration, implants, and smile makeovers, all in my office. And now we have two locations. Get the most advanced technology and procedures available today. It's more complete dentistry. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. Hi, this is Richard Simmons. Dr. Kavitko's here, and he's going to help you with all of your problems. Uh, are your teeth yellow? He can fix that. Are you missing a tooth? He can put a new one in. How is that? <laughs> That's very good. Thank you, Richard.
All right, we're back. We're doing Dr. Kvitko's question of the day. We have people on the phone waiting uh, with their correct answer, and today we're going to go to line two, which is Margie. Hey, Margie, how are you? Hi, I'm fine, and thank you. Oh, you're very welcome, and thanks for calling in. Hey, do you know the answer to Dr. Kvitko's question of the day? Yes, yes, all of the above. Was, did you find that interesting about Cleveland and Akron? I do. I'm from Cleveland. Yeah, I'm from Twinsburg. Where are you really from? You're not from Cleveland. Oh, Euclid. Okay, see, nobody's really from Cleveland. <laughs> Even the ones that say so, they're not, right? <laughs> okay. Hey, Margie, what do you do for a living? I'm a teacher. I'm a retired teacher, and now I teach at Ohio Wesleyan. Okay. Part-time. Awesome. Hey, well, thanks for calling in. Thanks for uh, tuning in, and uh, hey, listen next week, too, okay? So stay on the line. We need to get that information where we can send you the flowers from DeSantis. Thank you. You're very welcome. Bye-bye now. Okay, let me give that back to my producer. So if you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is The Reasons We Smile, episode number 527. And today we are talking about things you may not know about Children's Dental Health Month and Children's Dental Health. Uh, we just mentioned about how it actually started with a one-day and a one-week event in Cleveland and Akron in 1941. How about that? Okay, so now before the break, we were talking about... Um, some things you should do for your children's teeth. And then we got on to the fact that we're not just talking about the little bitties, we're talking about older children as well. So we need to make sure that we are checking for injuries. So if a parent knows their child was injured in the mouth, they should check for bleeding, tooth displacement, tooth fracture, or persistent pain. If any of these symptoms are visible, then a visit to a dentist is appropriate. The dentist will be able to establish a baseline of, for the tooth in case of future changes. It is common for a baby's tooth to turn gray after being hit, but should not be of much worry, because especially if it's really soon before it's about to be lost, then it can just be monitored, okay? Um, for children with permanent teeth, chipping while being injured is common. If a parent can locate the chipped part, they should take it with them to the dentist appointment, because it, uh, it can't usually be bonded back on, but it's nice for me to be able to see the uh, part that's missing. It'll help me with the shape. Believe me, I know how to, what, a, what the shape of a tooth looks like, but it's also nice to see the, the, the other half of the puzzle. Okay, it makes it that much simpler. So we can do it without the piece, but it's nice to have. Okay, so permanent teeth can also be knocked out due to injury. In this case, a parent should take proper measures to possibly save the tooth or help a stent to save the tooth. So act quickly and make sure the tooth spends as little time possible outside of the mouth. Do not scrub off uh, the dirt from the tooth because the tooth has cells on the root that are vital for the tooth to be reattached, these little fibers called Sharpie's fibers. Scrubbing it too hard can remove these cells. Gently rinse the tooth if needed and place it back in the tooth socket. Have the child gently bite down on a cloth to stabilize the tooth in its proper position and get to the dentist as soon as possible. If a parent is uncomfortable with any of these procedures, put the tooth in milk and get to the dentist as soon as possible. Or even better, there's a product called Save a Tooth. You can look it up online. I forget who the manufacturer is, but it comes in a little jar about the size of a Pond's cold cream jar. And you should probably have a couple of those sitting around if you have more than one child. So with these tips, parents can better un understand how to handle certain scenarios and potentially save their child's teeth. Now, or tooth. Now, my daughter, when she was nine, was running around. They were chasing each other out front and fell and hit her two front teeth on the sidewalk. You know, it happens. And so, uh, Ask them to be, you can't rub, wrap them in bubble wrap, although I think we'd love to at times. But just, you know, ask them to be careful and, and, um, and then be prepared in the event that something does happen. Okay, now, I was also in preparation for this show. I was reading an article in the American Dental Association, uh, the ADA News, and it actually was co authored, if I'm not mistaken, by Dr. Casima Simo, who is. Uh, a local uh, pediatrician who is tied to uh, Children's Hospital. I've actually had him on the show before. And so what they did is somebody did a survey. They did a patient survey trying to figure out if it matters what the dentist is wearing. So they took a total of 100 guardians and 97 pediatric patients. Um, more, of, more than 80% of the guardians w and 48% of pediatric patients were female. Among the guardians, 52% were African-American, 36% were white, and among the pediatric patients, 57% were African-American and 31% were white. They took photos of two men and two women, ages 30 to 35 years old, 
who happened to be white, and they were shown dressed in professional attire, casual attire, white lab coat, and scrubs. And they were all shown with a standardized physical stance, color of clothing, hairstyle, and facial expression. So here's the results. The, um, among children, 43% say they preferred a dentist in scrubs, while 37% ranked the white lab coat as their second most preferred attire. Guardians expressed the same preference for dentists to treat their children, but at a slightly higher rate, 56% preferred a dentist in scrubs, and 39% ranked the white lab coat as their second most preferred attire. However, here's interesting, for their own care, 56% of the guardians said they preferred dentists who wore a white lab coat. Okay? I think that's kind of interesting. Uh, guardians were most likely to associate a provider in scrubs as the most caring and compassionate. Providers in white coats were most likely to be chosen as the most confident and in control, 68%. Most knowledgeable, 73%. And as those whose advice guardians are most likely to follow, 66%. I think that's pretty cool. Um, White lab coats and scrubs ranked similarly 48 and 45 percent respectively for trustworthiness. Now at my office, I wear a lab coat, but it's not always white. I wear red and gray and uh, green and brown and, oh gee, what else do I have? Blue and light blue and, I don't know, I just think dressing professionally with a shirt and tie and then I try to match my uh, lab coats, uh, clinic gowns, to whatever I'm wearing. I think that's kind of fun actually. <laughs> I don't get bored with always wearing white and so, but anyway. It's looking like it's time for us to go to a break again. Uh, you're listening to The Reasons We Smile, episode number 527, and we'll be right back. You can take me as I am, and I just a little bit. I don't know who to be. I'm a paper cup, baby, of the sea. I know you see it too, because you're too much for me. This is Clark Kellogg. Stay tuned for more of Dr. Kavitko. Estás escuchando con Dr. Kavitko aquí en su estación favorita. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko, general dentist and host of the Reasons We Smile radio and roadshow. I've been honored to help several famous people get a perfect smile, like Keith Carlos and Dominique Rygaard from America's Next Top Model and Ted the Golden Voice Williams from right here in Columbus. Isn't it time you had a celebrity smile? It costs less than you might think, and most of the time, it can be done in one visit. A new smile can make a world of difference. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. I'm Grandpa, and I go to Dr. Kavitko, and I still have all my teeth. Real ones. Where's my glasses? <laughs> If you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is The Reasons We Smile, episode number 527. We are bringing you things you may not know about Children's Dental Health Month and Children's Dental Health. All right, so earlier, some of the, I mentioned a lot of things about recommendations for kids and, you know, when to bring your child. And I have, I also, in my research, I found an article written by Dr. Vincent Ionelli. He's a physician. It was posted on verywellfamily.com. And I just wanted to bring you a little bit of information that that he uh, wrote because there's a s kind of a little bit of a difference of opinion in the medical community apparently as to when, it, when the first uh, visit should be for dentistry. So it starts out by saying parents often have questions about how to take care of their children's teeth, when you should start brushing, what kind of toothpaste is best, and when you should go to the dentist. Knowing the answers to these questions can help you keep your kid's teeth healthy and cavity free. It says, although you don't necessarily, necessarily need to brush them yet, you should start cleaning your infant's teeth as soon as he or she gets their first tooth and gums even before they get teeth. At first, you can just use a washcloth to clean your infant's teeth, and as he gets more or she gets more, you can use a soft children's toothbrush. So by the way, this gentleman, Dr. Vincent Ionelli, is a pediatrician. Fluoride toothpaste. Because there is, a, because there is some danger if child, a child gets too much fluoride, your choice of toothpaste is important. Keep in mind that most brands of kids' toothpaste are fluoridated. They just have different flavors and popular characters on them to make them more fun for children. But that doesn't make, that make, make them safe for your child to swallow, especially if they get too much. If using a fluoridated toothpaste, use just a small smear of toothpaste until your toddler is about two years old. Then you can start to use a small pea-sized amount of toothpaste so that either way there is little danger of your child getting too much fluoride if he or she swallows it. 
And beginning to encourage your child to spit out the toothpaste at a young age is a very good idea. All right. The other alternative for younger children is to use a non-fluoridated toothpaste such as Baby Origel Tooth and Gum Cleanser until they are spitting out the toothpaste. But to keep in mind that most experts recommend that you use a small amount of toothpaste with fluoride. And if you are using that Baby Origel Tooth and Gum Cleanser that has no fluoride, make sure your child is drinking fluoridated water. That's me talking now. First visit to the dentist. Here's from the pediatrician. The timing of the first visit to the dentist used to be a little controversial. The American Academy of Pediatric Dentistry has long stated that children should see a dentist when they get their first tooth and not later than age one, which is what we said earlier. In contrast, the American Academy of Pediatrics used to say that unless your child has risk factors for having problems with his or her teeth, such as family members with a lot of cavities, sleeping with a sippy cup or bottle, teeth staining, thumb sucking, etc., the first visit to the dentist should be by around the age of three. However, even the Academy, American Academy of Pediatrics suggests that an early visit to the dentist is a good way to learn proper oral hygiene at an early age, including avoiding nighttime bottles or sippy cups of formula or juice, proper toothbrushing, and a healthy diet that promotes good dental health. You also may want to see a pediatric dentist early if your child has a medical condition that puts him or her at risk of having dental problems such as Down syndrome. And with their latest policy, policy statements, even the Academy of, uh, American Academy of Pediatrics states that all children should be seen by a dentist by their first birthday. Okay, just wanted to get that out there because uh, uh, parents see the pediatrician long before they ever see a, a dentist or a pedi uh, pediatric dentist, general dentist or pediatric dentist. And so we wanted to make sure that you knew that we now all agree age one, okay? Before, by age one is when they should be seen. So we're coming up towards the end of the show, and before we end, I wanted to throw out a few fun facts that I found while doing my research. And uh, by the way, I can't, I can't remember the website I found this on, so I apologize. I typed in uh, uh, interesting facts about teeth and dentistry, and it came up. So you can find out who this is from uh, yourself. All right. Did you know that the average American expends, uh, spends 38 and a half total days brushing their teeth over a lifetime? Now, to me, that's not, like, not really that much, just a little over a month for a lifetime of comfort. And comfort's important, right? <laughs> Taking care of your teeth. Uh, people who drink three or more glasses of soda each day have 62% more tooth decay, fillings, and uh, tooth loss than others. So put down the pop and sports drinks and pick up some nice fresh water instead. Okay, remember that one. Tooth enamel is the hardest substance in the human body. However, we don't recommend that you use your teeth to open bottle caps or anything else like ketchup packets and stuff. Okay. So anyway, that's probably it for the fun facts that we'll have time for today. It looks like I am just about out of time, so let me just re reiterate that I'm looking for an associate, so if you're a dentist with at least three years' experience, please give me a call. The phone number is 614-262-9588, or send me an email to bkvitko at aol.com. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Dr. Kvitko and visit my office Facebook page and like us. It's Dr. Kvitko and Associates. Remember that all past episodes, complete with video, are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com. Be sure to tune in next week and every week right here on your favorite station. Goodbye. Carly Red from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, the hit show on VH1, urging you to tune in next week with my dentist, Dr. Kavitko. If you're interested in learning more about this and other dental health topics, go to TheReasonsWeSmile.com to access full episodes of Dr. Kavitko's show. If you'd like Dr. Kavitko, the world's most interesting dentist, to speak at your next event, please call 614-262-9588. That's 614-262-9588. 9588 or send an email to speaking at 